for good. So you could say, in a sense, to do versus to make. In our English language, it's just poor. That's why we'll speak of it always as facere and agere, because we understand it more than to make or to do. Maybe our English doesn't, doesn't translate those real well. So I've come to understand that, but I'm like, what does it mean to do? Or, and what does it mean to make? Like, what, what activity is that? I start thinking about it. Activities that I do for their own sake. I could make a list and describe it. Let's do that. Give me a list. Give me some activities that you do where, who's the, where the activity itself is the goal. Sports. Reading. Reading. Hiking. Uh, <laughs> this is where the activity itself is the goal. Hmm? Well, like mean, if I were just to have a mm-hmm. canvas and I was to say, I'm just painting on it, but I don't know what I'm making. Would that be painting? Well, some people, yes. Not all. Yeah, let's not talk about the song. <laughs> It's hard. Huh? It's the same thing with sports. It's not always easy to make this discernment. Yeah. Because you're like, the goal is the sport, but then again, the goal of the sport is not the sport. It's the same with reading, too. Very good. It's reading. Where is it the same? Loving. You got it. Of all of these that you guys put, this is the only one that would qualify in a pure sense for IJ. Because you're like, what are you making out of love? Nothing. What are you producing out of love? Nothing. But you still do it. So now let's think of more along those lines. What are some other examples? Along the lines of loving. uh, What are some other things that you do? Ajiri wise. Caring for someone. Caring. That's a good word. Sacrificing. That? Um, I, that's a tough one. It's like because sacrificing kind of requires an object. Not always. Okay. What is, so you don't ever sacrifice? You simply do sacrificing without like sacrificing if you're something. offering something up. Uh-huh. So in the offering, there's the internal sacrifice. Mm-hmm. About listening. Yeah. Kind of like receiving yeah. another. Prayer. Empathy. Yeah, prayer. Okay, so you guys are getting it. Good. Uh, you're on the, more of the target. Okay, and these type of activities, what makes them what they are? That's the question. Like now all of a sudden we're wondering, we're experiencing that, right? We experience those things. And then we sit back and we're like, wait a second, what why does how did my mind make that differentiation? Because in all those actions, it's more like you're giving of yourself, not, um, not like at the end expecting something in return. Okay, so yeah, you're looking at it from the end goal. All right, that's cool. So immediate satisfaction. Yeah. So if we were to say that the an ajere, one thing that we could do is say we'll call it the finished product. Between these two, these two things, the finished product category is different. The finished product in Ajare is what? When I would, if I were to say, "I love you," what do I? What am I producing thereby? Morning, trick question. Producing love. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. It's like, but yet you can really love and you can really not love. What does a real act of love look like? How do you know in your heart that you really loved that person? You, um, How you you're not thinking of yourself first. You're putting, you're putting them first. And would you be able in your heart to differentiate between two loves? Okay. So like, let's suppose you're in a, you're, you tell someone that you love them at one point. 
and then they say something, and then you really look at them, and you really do an act of love. What was the difference between those two? One was action, and one was just words. Okay. So you're going to say in that ajre, that part of what ajre implies is actually acting out in a good sense. Acting out on an intention. But let's go back. I, did, I think you're right, but let's go back. Hasn't it ever happened to you where, I don't know, you, you, you're, you're like, um, I don't know, you see Vincenzo, and you're like, yo, bro, what's up? And Vincenzo's like, hey, you know? And then you look at him, and he's like, thanks, bro. And then you're like, <laughs> what was the difference? Yo, bro, what's up? And then, thanks. What, what, what happened? Somebody recognized me and I thank them. Oh, inside. Oh, inside of me? Inside of me. Think of an example in your life. That example was not an adequate one. <laughs> Think of an example in your life one seemed where you sincere. really put yourself into an act of love towards somebody. Sincerity? Okay, what makes something sincere? What is that? Thought uh, behind it. Knowing that person and putting that in that knowledge into action. Okay. Okay. There's a certain level of seriousness and Mm-hmm. Authenticity. I agree with you. That's pretty neat. Now go back into that experience. Give me more words. Go back into an experience where you were really doing an ajere. We talked about praying. We talked about contemplating. We didn't talk about that, but it was one of them. Contemplating, loving, caring, receiving. When a baby's born... And he got him. And then there's this something gooey and warm that comes out from inside of you. But it's more than that. There's a whole pondering of your life. Right? It's happening. Have you ever had the experience? Now go back to that. I want you just to stay there and wonder about it. Like, isn't that amazing? What's going on inside? Are you bored at that moment? No. Are you asleep at that moment? You're doing something. That's the question the philosopher is trying to ask today. What am I doing? How do I really put myself into it? Because if I could master it, I could be even more deliberate about the way that I live. And when I need to connect with someone, I can learn how. Now, if I was in the business world, I'd write a book called Emotional Intelligence. I would then create a business seminar to go with it, and I would make a million dollars a year walking around talking about emotional intelligence. All those business self-help books are all philosophy applied, but they rely for their accuracy upon true philosophy. I want you at the same time now, shift, shift focus for a second. Throw yourself into a moment where you've lost yourself in work. Has it ever happened? Can you talk to us, Bree? But when it's happened to you? Like when I'm painting? Give me, give me a description. Tell me about your experience. Um, the focus is more on what you're doing rather than anything around you. So time goes by like nothing. Yeah. Time goes by like nothing. Have you guys ever experienced that? Mm-hmm. Why do you suppose that is? Uh huh. What makes something enthrall you? What is it about something that it would just enthrall you? The beauty of it. Okay. If you find it inspiring, you find it enjoyable. Um, it's like you are accomplishing something. Can you tell me a time in your life where you've had that experience? Um, I mean, I'll do it when I'm playing. 
You just lose yourself in it. Mm-hmm. How about you, Vincenzo? Yeah. I think uh, that uh, basketball is kind of like that for me, mm-hmm. especially freshman year of college. Kind of just like you get lost because there's so much else happening in your life. Um, it's kind of nice to just go there and lose yourself. Are you able, when you guys are doing those things, to also be enthralled in love in a, in a, or in a, a relationship at the same time? With another person? Or with, just with what we're act? doing? Yeah, let's suppose you're, build, you're, you're building a house or you're building a, saw, a tree, a tr- uh, birdhouse. You got the saws going and you're in the zone and you're like, next step, next step. You need to have your book out. You just know the next step because you're in that whole project. You've got it in your head from step to step. And you're being attentive on the cuts. You ever seen, done something like that? Where you, you built something? Uh, when you're in that, could you, if I were to walk up and be like, hey, I really need to talk right now. Would would you be able to to do that without losing your focus? No. no. You're shooting. Yeah. You're in the zone. Three pointers. Three pointers. I'm like, yo, Vince, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> would you like be happy about that right then? Uh, yeah. It <laughs> he I mean, to talk to like, everyone. <laughs> yeah, it was like two hours in. I but could you do both? Could no. you be in the zone? Right. So it's like when a guy steps up the foul line and it's the national championship. Imagine if his mom ran out and was like, honey, I'll give you a hug first. Like he could not even handle that. That would not even work. Okay. So there's two types of activities. There. You can't do one. They're kind of like you can do both. But in the same way, let's, if you were in a bonding moment, it was a dinner and everybody's just enjoying. Have you ever had those meals where time doesn't count? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And at that moment, if I was to come up and be like, how's your fundraising going? <laughs> right. Buzzkill. Buzz exactly. See, yeah. isn't that amazing? Okay. So the, as a, as a philosopher, I'm in that experience and I'm wondering about it. I'm like, that's really cool. And then I say, what makes those two tick? Remember how we go experience to what? Wonder, Wonder to, 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 Two, yep, you got it. Last one. Experience to. Understanding. No, go again. Knowledge. Experience to. I I just did it. We just talked about the experience. Yeah, wonder. And wonder. Question. Two. Yep, two. Uh, discovery of principles. Yes, yeah, two. Two understanding. Yep, very good. And that understanding is formed in a judgment. When you're able to say, you know what your problem is, Vince? You lack focus. Now, if I was a business coach, that didn't mean that suddenly I could be making a million dollars off of this. If you're a boss of an enterprise, you're managing a team, and you have an understanding of these philosophical principles, you do not even need to read a self-help business book. You will, because that's where you're doing your level of philosophy. Your philosophy is going to be in those books. But all those books are is exactly what I'm teaching you. Just translate it. Because they'll be like, all right, if you're, if you are, um, if you need uh, new ideas, you need to have inspiration. In order to have inspiration, you need to have uh, an artistic experience. So you need to create a workplace that is more full of potential and then have brainstorming sessions where nothing is criticized. Like, why is, aren't these criticized at brainstorming sessions? Because there's a law of human nature that says that in order for me to get to a good idea, I have to be able to have a multitude of possibilities. That's called the imagination. And then when they're doing those brainstormings, they're always like, don't criticize it, even the wildest thing. And then someone's like, oh. And it's because what they're doing is you're using your artistic intelligence. Imagine if I was doing that with one of you. If I was like, treat Vince, how are we going to treat Vince today? Let's love him a million different ways. How would you do it? You're just like, you know, or let's, let's celebrate his birthday. Like, how would you do it? You're like, I know, let's take a picture of his dog and then shred it up in the sh- in the fan, you know, and then right in front of him. And then we'll take that dog's picture and throw it in the soup. You know, you'd be like, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> 
But if I was going to say, I want you to express for me the death of a dog, you could be like, let's take a picture, shred into a fan, put it in a suit, and be like, that sounds like art. And if you did it right, you could be, you would be a genius. Because there's two different realms. Ajere, fachere. Two ways of being. And then by mastering them, by understanding them, giving you that point of understanding, I'm able to live better. It's called practical philosophy. So there's two types of philosophy. The first is called speculative. And that is knowledge for knowledge's sake. Knowing for the sake of knowing. Things that are speculative like, does God exist? Speculative. If God exists, what's the difference between his perfection and his goodness? Speculative. It's extremely important because it ends up being very practical. But its first goal is not practical. Its secondary end is practicality. Whereas in a practical intelligence... You have knowledge for the sake of living. Of living better. Now it's like, you're, that practical philosophy, Stephen Covey wrote a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. I mean, that book is used in every, everybody talks about it. He's made multi-million dollars off of it. He's super famous. And all of his are seven things that you do when you're successful. It's philosophy, practical philosophy. It's all about fachere. Now, if you were to take those things and apply them to ajere, you make a disaster. Just like if you were to take uh, someone who doesn't know how to sing and say, oh, well, because they're, they have such a great heart, let them sing. You're like, you just destroyed the song. There's a, there's a different set of parameters. You can be harsh in fachere. Being harsh is not good in Ajay. Because it's a different world. What I want you to do is just get that kind of like in your back of your brain. And now let's wonder for a second. We're wondering. We start to ask questions. What is it that makes the two different? And you said one that produced them. So you have an acting out an intention here. And in Fachade, you have making or producing. Thing. But it's not quite the same thing. Acting on an intention and making and producing a thing aren't quite the same thing. I could make or produce something without an without a moral intention. This ajere is the realm of morality. Fachere is the realm of art. I mean, so you got this all day long, like uh uh, Regina, I used to make computer control panels. Let me hit my head against the wall. Do you care about the computer control panels? Do you love the computer? Are you doing it out of a great love for humanity? I mean, she's like, kind of, but not really. I could make them even on a bad day. I could make them even if I hated it. I could make them because what you do is you follow the process. Put these parts together, assemble them in this way. You can make or produce a thing. It's not quite the same thing as acting out of an intention. Now, ideally, it is. Ideally, your fachere is motivated by your fachere. That, that's called a great person. That's what we're trying to get you to do. But you have to respect that there's two different things. When I am hitting a tennis ball, I can't be like, oh, that passion in my world is going into this. And because I love it so much, I'm going to hit it well. No. Because you love it so much, you're going to focus your brain on the mechanics that you need to effectively hit that ball well. Sometimes if you get too passionate, you actually can't do what you have to do. Sometimes you have to get passionate enough to silence the passions. Mad enough to do what's required of you, regardless of the passions. <laughs> that doesn't make good movies, which is why. Movies, it's like da da da. He gets his face scrunched up, you know, and then he hits that ball. But most of the time in life, it doesn't help. The passions are actually going to make it worse for you because it doesn't matter if you have passion to produce a thing. In the same way, when you're producing something, it doesn't mean you have an intention. Honey, look at this table; it's perfect. And you 
you know, and you're just like, yeah, but you didn't mean it. This is kind of like what a politician talks. And, and he's just like, I believe in, in everybody winning. He just like, it's just empty words. But he's like, I said, I believe in everyone winning. No, you don't. We know you're a racist inside. No, I never said that. I said that I think everybody, they're wonderful people, right? And everyone's like, you're a racist. He's wonderful. I mean, he's wonderful. <laughs> But if I go backwards and I say acting out of intention, that means that there has to be an intention. And I generally, I'm going to put the intention over here. There has to be this moment where I have an intention. That's an amazing thing. What does that mean, an intention? I think like, this is what makes your act of love, of loving, of friendship, of action. This is what makes it real. I want you just to think with me. Go back to your experience of loving somebody. When you love somebody to the end of time. There's, what does that mean inside of you? When you really have an intention. What does that mean? That intention? I think you could say that that intention is an internal ordering of priority. Internal ordering of priority. I'm just I'm just going to use the description, right? If I'm going to respect the life of a person who is handicapped, I have to learn to see them as a human being. Why? Because that enables me to form an intention. If I'm going to disrespect the life of the handicap, I have to teach you not to see them as a human being. This is how Hitler, in his propaganda, would betray people who are handicapped. It's like kind of monsters. This is how the Navy SEALs get people to kill multiple people and not feel bad about it. They don't refer to them ever as people. They say move through the target. Eliminate the enemy. Eliminate, not kill, eliminate. Because if you formed a moral intention about what you were doing and that person who's in front of you, I remember seeing a movie about in Vietnam where uh, they, they had a hand-to-hand combat, you know, the North guy and the South guy. And, and then the, the South guy won in the end. He stabbed him through with his bayonet. You know, the guy dies. And then you kind of feel cathartic. Like, okay, good. The good guy won. The bad guy died. And then the, you know, he flips him off him like that, throws him on the ground, and the camera goes, because sticking out of his pocket is a rose. Like a picture of his grandma or something. You know, and you're just like, and then he like looks, you know, what about, he shifted all of a sudden, and he realized he wasn't an enemy. I wasn't moving through a target. I wasn't eliminating whatever hostility I killed another man. And I never intended to kill another man. I'm not going to intend. If I see, so you think like there's an intention also in art, but it's a different, different, go to a different word. This moral intention is a type of internal caring. Do you think that this is kind of like a word you could say is care? It's that shift that you see this a lot in movies, right? They kind of close in on the face. And then the eyes kind of get moist. And then you realize that she's seeing who he really is. What they're trying to portray on the outside is this internal ordering of priorities. I could never hurt you. This is is like, okay, so that moral intention needs to be there for me to act out on an intention. What else needs to be? There's that well, that moral intention has to, in order for me to act out on it, what do I have to do? Well, I'm going to have to choose. I'm going to have to make choice. A choice about what? Well, if I'm going to act out an intention, I'm going to act out an intention in a given way. Well, that means I have to choose the means to express or to realize 
realize not in the sense of knowing, realize in the sense of producing my, my, my intention. There's a lot of times where in our love, we're at the level of intention. Like usually it's with God. You're all like, Jesus, my little Jesus. Oh. And then it's like, but you can't keep silent in church. It's that there's tons of, you know, people that walk around, oh, Jesus, do you ever pray to him? No, no. Do you give tithes? No, no. Do you bother to fast for one hour before communion? No, no. But do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. Well, that's amazing. What does that mean, I love Jesus? What choice have you made that you have act out and live to make this intention real? Because the finished product in an ajere would be not only when you act out on it, but where that acting out is brings you to a genuine encounter with, I'm going to put the object with a person if you want. It's not just love. There's contemplation to this, but I want to put object. Contemplation is this way. You know, there's all kinds of things. But if you, if you go back to this, you can kind of see what's happening here. A lot of problems happen when you simply have intention, but you never choose it. That intention never becomes real. And that's why a lot of people's intentions can be completely fanciful. I would go into the building if someone was dying. Oh my gosh, yes. But when you really put it, you're, you know, to it. Remember, there's when I was protesting outside of an abortion mill, and a car drove up with our Lady of Guadalupe sticker on the whole rear, view, the whole rear windshield was our Lady of Guadalupe driving into the abortion mortuary. They may have even had a rosary around me. Do they have an intention? They probably do. But if you don't realize that that intention starts to become fanciful, you start to think that you're really a lover, you're really a friend, but you're someone tells you that they want you to do more interaction during class and you don't, you can say you never had that intention to begin with. This is amazing because this intention is the beginning of responsibility. If I accept that intention inside of myself, well then I have to say, I, 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 if, if I really am going to be interactive, if I'm really going to come over to your house, if I'm really going to show you love, you'll know it if I do it. But don't tell me I wanted to do it if you don't do it. Because what does it mean, I wanted to do it? You you wanted to do it like a whim. Okay, so give me an example of your own.